All right, let's take the next idea, and that is what kinds of chemicals make up hormones, or let's say hormones are made of what? How, what are they made of? So I'm going to give you two categories. Let's take this. So we'll call this classes. Classes of hormones. Now you can divide the, the, the chemical, and this is, by the way, chemical classes. I should be more specific here. Chemical classes of hormones. And you can divide these up into several different uh, categories. In some, in some cases, I'm a lumper. In some cases, I'm a splitter. In some certain things, I like to split things into more categories. Certain things, I like to lump things together in fewer categories. With respect to the chemical classes of hormones, I, I'm more of a lumper. I like to just give you two, two classes. Um, the, and so let's just t take these classes. The two different possible classes are protein hormones. So I'll say proteins. Uh, but and, and generally speaking, proteins are fairly large. Proteins are made of amino acids, of course. And a typical protein may be, typical protein hormone might be as many as 50 amino acids, maybe a little longer than that. Um, but also we have smaller proteins, but if they're small enough, we tend to call them peptides. So we'll say peptides. Sometimes we use the term oligopeptides. Uh, a couple of them, for example, are only a couple of the hormones. Uh, they're from the posterior pituitary. They're only nine amino acids long. So that would be an example of an oligopeptide, but we'll just use the term peptide. And then in some cases, we have hormones made of amino acid derivatives. Uh, thyroid hormone, for example, is made of an amino acid, uh, but it's been altered, so we say amino acid derivatives. Amino acid. So I'm uh, categorizing, categorizing all of these into one, one category here. And you might find a textbook that might make that into two different categories. All right, well, anyway, these proteins, peptides, or amino acid derivatives I'm putting in one category. The other category are steroids. OK, steroids. Well, then what kind of a molecule is a steroid? Well, steroids are lipid derivatives. And they're, you can look up the nice chemical structure in a textbook, but they, uh, all steroid molecules uh, originate from the cholesterol molecule. Now, cholesterol gets a lot of bad press because too much cholesterol, cholesterol in our diet uh, starts clogging up our arteries and can lead to cardiovascular disease. So we hear a lot of bad things about cholesterol. We make our own cholesterol, uh, and, and it's an important molecule. But it is true that if you eat a lot of animal fats, you will get too much cholesterol in your diet. But back to steroids then. The cholesterol molecule is the basic skeleton molecule for all steroid hormones. And they're all very similar chemically. Uh, and if you look at the steroid molecule, you'll see all these rings uh, of, of carbons. And each of the rings is, in, is, I mean, each of the carbons is numbered. And depending upon you know, where some particular molecule is hooked on to this steroid molecule, you can get something like uh, vitamin D, which is actually a steroid hormone, not a vitamin, miscalled a vitamin. You get testosterone. If you make a different change, make another change, you get a estrogen or one of the estrogens. And, you know, they're all kind of, the point is that all these different steroid hormones are similar chemically, but there's slight changes uh, with what's hooked onto what carbon. And consequently, there are huge changes in what, what the response might be. They, they're totally different molecules. Mo from your body's point of view. OK, so now we know what hormones are made of. And we'll go back to this idea of that we have target tissue, that, that you know, only the target tissue will respond to the hormones. And we said that the target tissue has on it receptors. So the next question is, what about the receptors for the two different kinds of uh, hormones. And these are very different chemical classes because proteins, of course, are water soluble and they float around dissolved in the, the in plasma, whereas steroids are lipid derivatives. In many cases, steroids are uh, carried on 
carrier molecules, various protein, various protein carrier molecules. That's a common thing. But the point is that steroids are lipids. Lipids can cross cell membranes. So the steroid hormones can cross cell membranes and get inside cells. Proteins are way too big to get inside cell membranes. Um, peptides usually are too big to get in cell membrane, in, inside cells because they don't cross cell membranes easily. Amino acids, they're small enough that they usually can cross the cell membranes. So we have a little bit of difference in terms of the receptors. Where are the receptors going to be? Well, if it's a steroid, the receptor is going to be inside the cell. Um, if it's a protein hormone, the receptor is going to be on the cell membrane. Same thing for a peptide hormone, usually. Uh, and so consequently, there's a slight difference in the way these molecules act. And that's actually going to be the subject of uh, the next talk. So I'll stop at this point and continue this lecture the next time. Okay, so this lecture is going to discuss the way that the two different types of hormones interact with their receptors. And the two classes of hormones are proteins, peptides, and amino acid derivatives. Uh, that's one class. The second class, steroids. Uh, so we'll start with the proteins and peptides. Actually, this will we'll be talking mainly about the proteins and the peptides, not the amino acid derivatives, because the proteins and peptides are very large molecules. And hormones are informational molecules. They want to give some information to the cell to tell the cell to do something. Uh, however, proteins and peptides are too large to get inside the cell. So, uh, if